אוקיי. אוקיי, בשעה טובה. So we say, we pa- פרק ה', פסוק י"ז. פסוק י"ז. אז אנחנו למדנו בלאסט שיעור, שלמה המלך הביא לנו את הדרגות, את הלבות של תורה, נכון? של איך אתה לומד תורה. First you have to toil, sacrifice, invest, and learn from your Rav. Then you get used to it, and you start learning on your own, but you still need to go to the source. Eventually, you get used to it so much that it becomes part of you, and you start making your own Hidushim, right? And... On the same on the, the same path when when you know when you you learn the Torah you, you teach the Torah and then your Torah goes out further than your own reach these are the three you know, uh, parallel uh, la- the, the layers of limuda Torah says Shlomo Melech פסוק י"ז, יהיו לך לבדיך, they will be yours alone, they will be, ואין לזרים איתך, now pay attention, if you, I don't know if you have uh, the תאמים, it, it says ואין לזרים איתך, it doesn't say ואין לזרים איתך, ואין לזרים איתך, And uh, the, the, the Zarim, the strangers that are with you aren't. The Zarim itach en. What does that mean? So the Gaon explains, he says, There can be two types of Yetzirah when a person learns his Torah and teaches Torah. You, so it's, it's, the, it's an answer to the Yetzirah. You lecha levadecha, it will be yours alone. He says the person can say, what's the point of learning Torah from somebody else? I'm, I'm investing time, effort, going out of my way, having to understand, having to listen. And you know, what am I gaining from all this investment? So says Shlomo HaMelech, Yiu lecha levadecha. You should know that your efforts And your your d- devotion and your sacrifice you benefit from it you and only you so beyond the the fact that you are learning a Torah that's already Shulchan Aruch, that's already you know ready for you by the Rav and he's already put it all together for you to understand it and The, the 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 toil and the effort that you're gonna do that you're doing it's yours the person can say ah all right so I'm gonna I'm gonna invest right I've sacrificed now why should I go and teach someone? something I've, I've invested so many so much time for let the person break his head and when he's at my level uh, we can learn why should I take of my time and teach and make it easy for others that didn't really yeah you know, they didn't work hard they come they turn on the zoom and they listen They didn't spend hours of, of preparing, of learning and combining. Why should I do that? 
זה גאון לבדך, יהיו לך לבדך. That in a chinami, but the, the beracha and the yegi'ah are yours, and only yours. Meaning what you convey is the Torah. But the toil to get to what your delivery, this you don't transfer. And that aspect, that beracha of the learning in preparing in order to teach, is a beracha that you, you keep. That is worthy for you. And then you might say, okay, but so so I'll do it only to the, the Talmudim that I feel are very close and uh and the and you know that I can relate to. Says your Torah has to be again a Torah that will trend that will surpass you and that will go beyond your time and your efforts to the Zarim, to the strangers. What does it mean to the Zarim? Says the Gaon, your students are your kids, are your banim. A student has a title of Ben. So for the Banim, it's worth to sacrifice time and effort and invest. That's Banim. You, when, you, when you have Talmudim that you, you're close to, you develop an intimacy, an understanding. You don't have to say too much for them to understand what you mean. There is a, a, a connection. There is a bond. But the Zarim, you don't even know who they are. And why should you, this Torah go to, to, to the Zar? Why should my Torah or the Torah of my students that actually eventually will take what, I've, what I teach and will work on it and will make, their, make it theirs why should that effort, again, be shared with others that don't even know the source of the Chochmah? So says, says the, the, the Gaon, it's true there's Zarim. Aval itach, itach. All, if, the end, it's true that they're not with you, the end, there's no, there's not, there's no, they're ayn like this. There's no, there's no relationship. There's no connection. But the Torah of the Zar, the Torah that the, the stranger will, will, will receive, itach, is yours. The benefit is yours. So the Gaon explains that Shlomo HaMelech tells us that we, we, we tend or we might be a little bit overprotective when it comes to the chokhmah we want to teach. And in Achinami, the truth is that it's like that. You cannot teach everything to anybody. You can't. He pinpointed and chose student, student to, to whom he wants to teach. He had haburot where he allowed certain people to come in and others not to come in. Not everybody, this is not a shuk. It's not shuk mahane Yehuda, you just come and take. You have to be worthy. You have to be ready. You have to be open. So, and, and, and the Torah is something that's very precious. You don't just open your diamonds to anybody that wants to come and take. So, Although it's true you are very sensitive and overprotective of your Torah, but says the, Ga says the Gaon, this toiling, that effort, that sacrifice that you're willing to do, don't, don't let it be a reason not to spread your Torah and not your, to teach your Torah. So yes, it's true. You toil to learn. You toil to teach. Yes, 
and and let it let, let it flow because the effort and the sacrifice that that you invest in your torah is yours and no one else's le atid lavo after 120 years you might not get the, a lot of sachar on the Torah that you, you were taught and you, and you just listened to. But you will get definitely sachar for the sacrifice and the effort you invested to learn the Torah. And that is the, the, the appeasing uh, feeling or, or, or knowledge that a, that a Talmud Chacham should have when he's invested a lot of effort to, to, to learn and teach the Torah. Good? Just one question. Shouldn't it the approach be like uh, more Leshem Shamaim and not tell you, okay, do it because it's your benefit? Nachon. But once again, we are right now discussing about an individual, right, that is building himself in the Derech HaTorah, right, in order to protect himself from Ta'avot and from the, the greed, right? So, so Shlomo HaMelech is exposing the challenges. The Gaon is bringing forward, right, what, what, what a person will will face. Now, it's true that that ideally, ideally, it's only Shem Shamayim. And there should be no hashbonot, but you cannot teach someone and tell someone, you know, just do leshem shamayim and everything is going to be okay. Steps, steps. There's step steps. Step. There's exactly. You need to know your yetserara. You need to know your challenges. You need to know your what you're facing in order to overcome it. Okay, thank you. So here's the Amelech is telling us. Look at the way the Gan explains. Right? Yes, it's true. I've given you the 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 the, the, the steps to grow into Torah. But those steps, you're going to feel, you, you're going to find some challenges. And if you don't find the challenges and you feel like it's just like it's normal to share, yeah, then maybe you're not really respecting your Torah. Maybe you don't really love your Torah. Go to a Beta Midrash and see two people arguing on a Rashi. They can stab each other. They can kill each other. You think they're in like they're, they're, they they want they 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 hate each other. The second they close the Gemara, or they move on. They love each other. They, they they're best friends. But when 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 you fight for the emet, and there's no way you're giving it so easily. There's no way you you just letting it go. So yes yes, you have to be super sensitive, overprotective of your Torah, but that should not stop you from teaching and having kids and letting these kids teach strangers. Good? Pasuk Yudchet. Yehi mekorcha baruch Let your mekor, your source, your be blessed. Your fountain, the way they do. Usmah me'eshet ne'urecha, and be happy, be enjoy, be joyful from the wife of your youth. Says the 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 the, the gaon. As a beracha to the overcoming of the oversensitivity of your efforts in Torah, your source, your fountain, your makor of Torah should be blessed. You should be Kemayana Novea. You should be someone that keeps saying Hidushim all the time. Always revealing more and more secrets of the Torah. All the time, every time you learn more secrets, the Torah is open to you. Usmah me'eshet ne'orecha. 
and you should be happy with the, your the wife of your youth. Says, and there's another another lesson of Musa. He says usually a wife when you marry marry her young. Eventually, you get uh, used to it, com uh, complacent, and uh, there's no there's no more excitement. He says the bracha is that you should have the wisdom, the sensitivity, the awareness to love and appreciate and enjoy your wife. As if it was the first day. And obviously, who is he talking about when he's talking about the wife, talking about the Torah? My father-in-law, Allah Shalom, Rabbi Ruven Arush Tatsan, he used to say, how he, when he used to see, uh, we used to see me or my brother-in-law, he used to see one of his Talmidim after. So he said, how is your first wife doing? How is your first wife? First wife is your, your the first Kala that you have is your Torah. At the Bar Mizra, you get married with the Torah. That's your first wife. And then after that, we say, okay, and how's the second one? Your first wife is your Torah, Kedosha. And the Gaon refers to a Zohar, which is so spectacular, which I think it is worth learning inside. Because this is the Hidush. He says, the Hidush of, of Shlomo Melech is what the Zohar teaches us. The Zohar is in Parashat Mishpatim, Pasuk, sorry, page Tzadik Tet Amud Aleph. The Zohar says the following. I want to go inside because it's Matok Midvash and it's... Come and learn. Come and see. The, the, the path, uh, what is the path of Torah? First, when the Torah wants to reveal itself to men, the Torah will engage with remazim, with hints. What does that mean? The, per the, the Torah, when he sees the person growing and becoming more open to Limuda Torah, the Torah tests the person. Pay attention. It's not the person that tests the Torah. The Torah tests the person. The Torah is an essence. It's a presence. It's a living force of, of uh, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought to the world. And it tests the person. Now the person is engaging with the Torah. He's starting. Tav. If, he, if he picked up on the on the Hints and he's happy if he's quick, he understood. Great, we move on. But if he didn't pick up, he's not that shrewd, he didn't really understand. She sends a shaliyah to him. A rabbi. And she tells me karatle petty, and she calls the, the, this the, the 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 this person a petty imbecile, a simple-minded, an ignorant. The amret oraita leahud shadrat legabe, and she tells the the, the chacham the Torah that she wants to teach. She says, I'm sending you to this person. The Torah tells the Shaliyah, the Talmud Chacham, I'm, I'm choosing you to go teach this individual and tell the individual that when he learns Torah, to come to me. When he's ready to learn Torah, come closer to me. Like the Pasuk says, Mi peti chaser lev. So, Kariv le Gaba Sharia de Malala Ime, mi bata paroha. 
the parsani. So the first, the the Chacham goes and starts teaching, and he's talk. It's it's the level of the petty. It's talk. The 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 meaning. The Chacham himself doesn't even know that he is sent to a to a tzibur. The person thinks he chooses a kal, right? A kadosh baruch Hu chooses the person for that specific kal. For what reason? To teach them and open their hearts. But it's a chacham teaching a petty. As the person slowly, slowly opens his heart. And he wants to learn more. So he Karev, he wants to get more of the Torah. So now there is a there is a, a veil, okay, separating the Torah from the person. And the Torah will start giving him remazim and teach him the, based on uh, based on what he's able to take. Until he learns more, he learns more. And then he gives him drasha. It's revealing the drashot of the Torah. It says, like the Gemara says in the Maseret Ta'anit, Shemesh Beshabbat Tzedakah La'anim. Shemesh on Shabbat, it's Tzedakah to the poor. Why? Because it doesn't rain. And they don't have to, uh, to stay outdoor in, in the cold. So when there's sun outside, Hashem does say that was the poor. That's the drasha. But there are a lot of secrets in it that we don't, that the petty doesn't really know. The person that's growing doesn't know. Then, then when the person gets more closer, understands more, picks up more, then the Torah is now separated by the person with a thin, uh, like a drape. She's thinner than the veil. And the Torah starts revealing Agadot, secrets of Agadot. Like the stories of Rabbi Bachana in the, in the Gemarot, which are very hard to understand as a pshat. How can it be that Rabbi Bachana made barbecue on, a, on an island which was really the back of the Leviathan. Like, what does that mean? Right? So these are the Agadot. The Torah starts revealing more and more. Once the person is really, you know, he's engaged, he's learning, he's, 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 uh, he's, he's one with the Torah, the Torah takes off the veil completely, and now the person and the Torah are face to face. And the person gets the revelation of all the Torah. And then the Torah tells him, you remember when you were breaking your teeth to learning the basics, the pshat. So the mefashim, the matobina says, hey, like the Aleph. Remember I told you the Aleph when you were a little kid, right? Aleph. And you say, Aleph. Now I'm going to reveal you the circuit of Aleph. Aleph is made of two yud and a vav. Right? The way the Aleph is written, you have a vav in the middle, you have a yud on top and a yud on the bottom. Together, yud and yud is 20, and vav is 6. That's 26, the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The, the first letter has already in it the gematria of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And the vav is the, in the middle is the rakia. And the first, the yud on top is the, the water that's above the rakia and the the what the yun under is the water under the rakia like the Torah split says in Basim Bereshit right the rakia came and split the waters above and the waters under and it's called Aleph because it's the opposite of the word Pele Pele is what we don't understand what's hidden what's extraordinary so Akadosh Baruch who take the Pele and hid it and made it Aleph but that's the secret that's in the Aleph. But when you when you started to learn Aleph, were you were you able to understand that? You were not able to understand that. But because you've invested and you've come closer to me and closer and closer and closer, now I'm revealing to you 
that that simple Aleph has tremendous secret in it. And the Torah goes on and on to reveal more and more and more secrets. For that reason, says the Zohar, a Talmud Chacham understands and values every letter of the Torah and makes sure that it doesn't, you cannot add or take away even a cut of the Torah. Because all, everything is all about secrets. This is the Zohar Kadosh. So says the Gaon Mivilna, this is what Shlomo Amelef tells us. Usmah me'eshet ne'orecha have the wisdom, have the awareness, have the, the, the chokmah that when you grow and you get closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and to your Torah, to go back to Bereshit, to go back to the simple studies, to go back to the Pshat. And now you tie the Pshat with the Sod. And now the Pshat becomes so much more beautiful and so much more powerful because you look at the Pshat knowing in it all the Sod that's in it. What do we say in the Birkata Torah in the, in the morning? Venihi anachnu vetzeet sa'enu vetzeet sa'et sa'et sa'enu kunanu yodai shemecha velo medet toratecha lishma. Right? I think I told you that in the past. It's the order is not right. We should say venihi anachnu vetzeet sa'enu vetzeet sa'et sa'et sa'enu kunanu lo medet toratecha lishma veyodai shemecha. Because your de'e shemecha is what? Knowing your name is the secrets of your name. So first you know lomde Torah techa lishma. First you learn Torah lishma. And then you reveal the, the secrets of the Torah, of, of, of the Shemot HaKodesh. Right? Says So the 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 the, the, the bracha is we should know your name. And that's the secrets of the Torah. But after we know the secrets of the Torah, you go back to your You learn Torah Lishma. Then you take all the sodot and bring them back to the Limuda Torah Pashut. That's the Chokhmah. And this is what this is the Beracha that. This is the Berachah that David, that Shlomo Amelech tells us, that you don't stay in the in the spheres of in the spheres of of the of the, of the, the secrets of the Torah, but you're able to go back to the Pshat, go back to the, the to the simplicity, and from the simplicity see the entire Sodot Torah. So this is making a full circle of the Limud Torah, and by doing that, you go back to the sensitivity and simplicity of the teaching of people that might not be at your level. Because now you don't get stuck in the sod. Now you're focused on the pshat. <coughs> but when you teach the pshat, there's a sod in your pshat. So you allow your students to know the pshat, but the ones that are sensitive enough or open or quick enough will pick up that there's a sod in that pshat. So this is an extremely important aspect and part of the levels of and 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 the and the limuda Torah. <clears throat> Good. Pasuk yutet. Yeah. No. No. Any questions? Any questions? Good. Pasuk yutet. A yelet a having a loving dough. The yalat hen da deha. I'm so sorry. The yalat hen da de. A graceful mountain goat. Yeravucha. Mechila. 
Let me repeat it. I'm trying to uh, give you the proper thing. Ayelet Ahavim is a Ayala is a Ayala is a boat, right? A, a, a Bombi or whatever it's called. I don't know an Ayala. Okay. Huh? Baby deer. A baby deer. Maybe. A deer, yes, like a Bombi. Yeah. Like a and that's the 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 graceful uh, goat mountain goat let I'm not going to go by the, the I'm not going to go by the, the translation. It's too complicated. Okay. No, no. They, 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 I don't. I don't agree with the way they they translate. Okay. Ayelet uh, Ayelet Ahavim is the 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 Bombi. Okay. The what did you call it? The baby deer. Yala can the Yalat hen is the mountain goat. Dadeha yeravucha becholet her breast. Uh, Satisfies you, okay, it fills you up at all times. And with her love, you always uh, uh, infuriated, infuriated, infatuated, infatuated, ravished. Okay, so, so here the, the Gaon explains this, explains this Pasuk al Piasod only. He says, a big yesod in a, in a relationship between husband and wife. He says, there are four parts to the bond of a husband and wife. There is hibuk, hug, nishuk, kiss, zivug, intimacy. And the fact that she is a keret abayit, and the fact that she is the most important at home, she is the anchor, she is the foundation of home. <laughs> so these are the four interactions and the four bonds between Ish Would you repeat the, the four? Yes, the okay. four connections. The first one is Hibuk, Hug, Nishuk, Kiss, Zivug, Intimacy. And the fourth one, which is the most important one, is Akeret Abayi Dufata. She is the uh, Ikar of the home. She is the foundation. She is the, 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 the structure of the home. So he explains that. He says, Ayelet Ahavim is referring to the Zivug. And this is the Sodota Torah. Ya'alat <laughs> Hen is the Nishuk. And the goat of the mountain, yeah, is the Nishuk. That is the hibuk, the hog. Why? Because it says tamid, always. At all time, you need to make to see to look at your wife as being the ikar of your home, as being the foundation, the structure, the, the most important part of the home. She says these are, this, these are compared to the four levels of Torah. The, the intimacy is the sod, the secret of the Torah. The secrets of the Torah, you don't share every, with anybody. It's very private. It's very secret. And just like an intimacy, it's in closed doors. 
היא על הדחן ונישוג דקיס. היא says that's the רמזים. The רמז of the Torah. The רמזים are the, the hints. It's signs of uh, connection, signs of love without too much expression, too much, without too much exposure. Dadea Yervucha Becholaet is the drashot, the drash. Again, it's another sign of bond, of, of connection, but less than the kiss, and obviously less than the intimacy. But also means something. And then you have the pshat, which is Be'avatatish Getamid. Says the Gaon, and in the pshat, this is what you're always focused, right? You're always learning the pshat. We're only learning the pshat. But it's only if you have healthy and strong, intimate connection that you give value and the proper uh, the proper respect and the proper attention to the fact that your your that your wife is the akeret abayit. She's the ikar. So the closer the closer you are and the more intimate you are with your wife, and the more you give her respect and understand how important she is in the pshat. Right, that she's she's the center piece of the home of 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 the of the family. So says the Gaon. This is what Shlomo Amir is telling us. Ayelet Ahavim, which is the the intimacy, ve'yalat chen, which is the 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 kiss. That they have yiruvucha becholet. Right, you you you'll enjoy. From a place of life, which is the 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 the, the chibuk, which is the hug, the ahavata tishgetamid, you'll be satisfied or whatever you you call it, you translated, uh, 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 all, all the time you'll be with it. Or, uh, how did you translate tishge? Infatuated. Infatuated. Okay, all the time. That's that's the pshat. That is the pshat. That is the pshat. So it essentially what what Shlomo Melech is telling us according to the Gaon, that if you learn your Torah properly, suddenly you wrap up all the different levels of connections you have with the Torah, and find them in the most simplest forms. Even though it seems simple, you understand what I'm saying? You're gonna find the secret. You're gonna see by by giving respect to your wife. You're it's you're infusing those moments of intimacy and bond that nobody sees. But this is how you respect her, right? By showing that she's the, the most important, you're expressing much more than just my wife is important. You're expressing the, all the love and the bond that has been shared in every layer. So the the, the what Shlomo Melch and and, what, and the gown ends with with Siro there, which we we're not going to really go into. But he, he wants to say that that we have you know it's against Chokhmah Bina and Daat and the Shivat Tachtonot. But basically what he's saying is that when, when you have a, a strong and healthy relationship with the Torah at all level, and you don't get stuck somewhere, you find an, os you find an osmos between all level that allows you then to share every level properly with, the, the, with, with your students. But each level is infused with the other levels. So when you when you teach the the, the drash, for example, 
You teach the drash, but in the drash there's the sod, and there's the remez, and there's the pshat. You teach the pshat, there's the drash, there's the remez, there's the sod. It's all in it. It's, it's one, one ecosystem that, that coexists together, which you benefit from on every different layer. This is, this is the Torah that we're talking about. This is the Torah, the, be the benefit, the bracha of the Torah that we're talking about, that is a source of protection, that is a shield of protection, that is so filling and so overwhelming, right? That there is no room or interest for anything else. We're going to stop here because then he goes back to the Isha Zara. And after explaining how the Isha of the Torah is so beautiful and so filled with love and harmony, you're going to say, Lama teach gave Isha Zara. Why, why, why go to the Tavot? What, and now, you know, why would you fail then? But that's the best of the Shem for next year. And be there. Maybe we'll, find, we'll finish Perek uh, Heblin there. Clear? Any questions? Are we, are we good? Yes. Rob, a lot of this section is reminding me of Shia Shirim. Yes. The language. Yes. yes. Yeah, the, the language of Ahava, the Ishazara, exactly. Nachon. Nachon. One for a second, Rabbi. Yes. We went so the name is Drash Pshat. And the only way to really get the from what's what I understood and correct me if I'm wrong the only way to really get the essence of the remez and the sod is if we are essentially practicing the pshat connecting to our relationship with our wives it, at the end at the end is bringing end. it all back to the simplest the simplest and the most basic form you go from 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 the simplest form up to the sod and then back down. And then it just it circles back and we correct. Got it. Correct. And 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 like we said earlier, and that's that's how you solve the frustration of teaching something that you might feel you don't want to teach, or the, or the, the others are not worthy teaching. And this is what the Zohar tells us, right? After the, the, the person has learned the Pshat and the Remez and the Drash and the Haggadah, right? And the sword comes the Torah and tells us, come, come, come. You remember what you learned, the Aleph you've learned. Go back to the Pshat. This is what's in it. So now, how much more meaningful the respect you give to, the, to your wife or, the, 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 uh, or how much more meaningful your Pshat is? When it's infused with yedia and with knowledge and 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 of 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 sod. that's called sniut. Liot sanua to be to be pudic, sniut to be it's it comes from hanava right, is. Basically, doing an action that is pshat that looks simple, but doing it with so much more meaning and depth in it, and only the ones that actually relate to that level can pick up that there's more than just an action. This is the greatest level of Avodat Hashem. Going back to the to the famous uh, mashal that my grandfather told me, yeah, who is more who is more uh, uh, impactful? Somebody that is at present doesn't move or the one that thinks he's fighting, you know, he's moving and he's fighting with, uh, he thinks he's fighting with, uh, with, uh, you know, somebody. If you're able, you understand what I'm saying, yeah? Zagadrut, 
וואו. בעזרת השם. It's a lesson of צניעות. This is a lesson of an ava in צניעות. God it, I got it. נפלא. נפלא מאוד. ושורות טובות. כל טוב.